And joining us live now is Robert Ford. He was the last U.S. ambassador to Syria, leaving the country in 2012 when the violence uh, got significantly worse. Uh, ambassador, thank you so much for being with us. So we just heard there a snippet of the interview with the head of um, HTS, Al Jalani, with our Germanic Karadze. And he says that his stated goal in all of this is not just obviously uh, to take over Aleppo, then Oms, and then, you know, obviously they're trying to make their way to Damascus. They also got Hama as well. Um, but that their goal is really to overthrow the Assad regime. Give us your take on that. Can they actually do it? Is this the window of opportunity that they've been waiting for for at least eight years? Uh, well, thank you. Uh, it, first of all, Jolani has always had this goal. Uh, he has never changed. He has never wavered in it. Second, I think what we are seeing in Syria is the most serious challenge during the entire 12-year Syrian civil war, uh, the most serious challenge to the Assad government's control over the country. Uh, never before have the Syrian armed opposition controlled Aleppo in its entirety, Hama, uh, and uh, the eastern part and the southern parts of the country all at the same time. Uh, the Assad government's control looks very shaky, but the future of Syria itself and the end of the civil war uh, is still very much in question. And Mr. Ambassador, the prime regional beneficiary out of all of this appears to be Turkey. And just today, to confirm that, President Erdogan said that he hopes the Syrian rebels will advance, quote, without any accidents or hardships. Um, he's doing this at a time when he's trying to limit Russia and Iran's influence in Syria. But does he not only, uh, also risk further instability at his own border? I think uh, you have hit a nail right on the head. The, Syri the Turkish government uh, would very much like for Syrian refugees in Turkey. There are four million of them. Uh, they'd like a very large number of them to leave Turkey and return to their homes in Syria. If uh, Aleppo stays calm and secure, um, hundreds of thousands, if not a million or more Syrians displaced from Syria's second largest city, Aleppo, could go home. That would be a huge gain right there mm -hmm. for President Erdogan and his government. Um, if fighting continues in and around Damascus, which is still possible, uh, it would delay the return of other Syrians. If Homs falls, again, uh, hundreds of thousands of Syrian refugees would be able to return to Homs if it stays secure and stable. The Assad regime has been in power for, I think, more than five decades, since 1971. And uh, to maintain that grip on power, the regime has had to carry out really brutal tasks, including murdering um, thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of civilians, obviously, um, you know, displacing millions of people, of course, uh, across Syria. Just in terms of the U.S.'s strategic interests, whether you have Assad in power, whether you have HTS in power, which is, um, as far as the U.S. is concerned, the lesser of, of the two evils? Well, it's, it's difficult to say what's best for American interests. Obviously, the United States has had an extremely difficult relationship with the Bashar al-Assad government over the years. Bashar al-Assad's government, for example, facilitated the movement of jihadis into Iraq 10 years ago, 15 years ago, that were killing American soldiers as well as Iraqi civilians and soldiers. Um, at the same time, uh, Abdelkader Jolani had links to Al-Qaeda and the Islamic State, he seems to have cut those ties. He's acting in a more moderate uh, fashion now. But in a sense, he's an unknown quantity, both among Syrians as well as with the international community. I think the best thing uh, that the Americans can do right now is work for a ceasefire and a peaceful transition to a new Syrian government negotiated by Syrians. When you look at um, what we heard in some of this interview, uh, this exclusive interview with Arjamana Karachi and Al Jalawi, he said two things. He says that the Syrian regime is now dead, in his words, and that, quote, our goal is to build institutional governance. What does that even look like, in your view, institutional governance? It's one thing to lead a, a lightning paced revolt and assault, as he has been for the past week and a half. It's quite another to lead a country made up of such a variety 
of sex. Do you think at this point he has the ability to govern the country as a whole? And in your view, is the Assad regime, for better or worse, um, dead, as he describes? Well, I think the Bashar al-Assad government and the entire regime is really shaking right now in a way it has not since the civil war started in early 2012. Uh, I, I think let's talk for about Jelani and, and his HTS group for a minute. Um, we have two models of what it what it is and how it might be. Uh, he's been governing the province in Idlib and its capital uh, Idlib city uh, since 2015. Um, it functions, it has everything from a Department of Health to a Department of Education to Department of Economic Development, um, electricity, water, infrastructure services function. Um, Syrian American medical groups that send American citizens, Syrian American citizens go over there um, to work in hospitals and clinics providing health care, have told me that they work comfortably with the HTS people. The HTS fighters don't bother them. They don't ask for money. They don't kidnap them. Um, that the doctors and the medical staff can perform their, their work without difficulty. Um, we now should look at the uh, Aleppo city where your correspondent was just reporting. And we would just have to say so far so good, but it's still very, very early days. And in particular, the Syrian opposition has not all confirmed that they are loyal to Abdelkader Jolani, there are still different factions, including the important Syrian Kurdish community and a militia faction in that community, which is very uncomfortable with Jolani, even if they're not fighting him. And the fact that there are so many different factions does complicate matters for, for HTS, um, you know, given that their, their stated goal is to march towards Damascus and overthrow the Assad regime. Uh, we know that the foreign ministers of Iran, Russia, Turkey are meeting tomorrow um, on the sidelines of a forum in Doha. They're obviously going to be discussing Syria. What can those nations do just in terms of assisting the Assad regime um, at this particular point in time? Well, the, these are the three key international actors with respect to the Syrian situation. I think the most they could hope for at this point, the most, would be some kind of a ceasefire that enables a transition government to form uh, negotiated by Syrians. This is part of an old UN plan that dates back to the year 2012. Uh, the Bashar al-Assad government always, always, always refused compromise refused any political concessions to form a transition government. Um, its position now is much weaker. If you look at social media accounts of uh, loyalists to the Assad government, uh, it is remarkable the change of tune in 24 hours. Suddenly they're talking about everybody being friends and national unity, a very different tone. Uh, a much weakened Bashar Assad without the assistance of uh, Iran via its, pro its proxy Hezbollah, who has been mired and severely weakened in its fighting with Israel and obviously Russia, which has been focused the past two years in its war in Ukraine, which helps bring us uh, to this situation in Syria. Ambassador Robert Ford, thank you so much.